Hi, it's the Boffin again, and today we're looking at low-cost alternatives to buying relatively expensive flux remover for circuit boards. I've got some samples here of some chemicals you might have around the house or are relatively inexpensive to purchase, plus I've got the real McCoy at nearly $20, $16 to buy this uh, can of flux remover from MG Chemicals. Everything else you see here is $5 or less. We have isopropyl alcohol. We have non-acetone based nail polish remover. We have acetone based nail polish remover. So let's see how they all stand up against each other. I've got some sample boards that I've got here. What these are are just little power boards for a breadboard, but they have some flux residue on them. Flux residue has been there for a while. I've also got some other boards I soldered up. We'll get some close ups of these in a minute. But let's have a look and see how each one of these stands up. For the test, I'm going to just put a little bit in the, each of these bowls. We'll give it a little scrub with everybody's favorite tool, the old toothbrush, and see which comes out as the best flux remover. So here we are for test number one. I'm just using a store brand 99% isopropyl alcohol. I prefer the 99%. It seems to leave less residue behind versus the sort of more typical 70%. You might have to look a little bit harder to find this, but inexpensive. I think this was four or five dollars. We'll just pour a little bit into this bowl and we'll have a look at uh, how these boards, it's a little soak, a little scrub. Likewise on this other board. And we'll have some close-up shots and see how this works. Okay, we've given these a little scrub. Let's give them a little shot of compressed air just to dry them off. And we'll have a look at that under a close-up and see how it did. That's pretty good. It's taken most of the flux off on this little power board. There doesn't appear to be too much residue, a little bit of white powder. But most of the flux is gone. Check the other board. Dry it off with a little compressed air. I'd call that pretty much a success. Let's now uh, try our second test, which is going to take half an hour. And we're going to see how it stands up to plastics. So we'll leave the little connector here in the isopropyl. I'm also going to drop in push button top of a and we'll just let that sit for half an hour while we do the next batches. Next up and I don't know if anybody can see this but on these boards I've scribed a little letter so we can trace them and see what they look like before and after. This one is going to be the non acetone based nail polish remover. Again, just an inexpensive brand. Pour a little of that into their bowl. Let that sit for a couple of seconds and give it a scrub. Scrub off the other one. We'll shoot that with some compressed air to dry it. And let's have a close look at that and see what it looks like. Under higher magnification, this looks pretty good. It seems to have got almost all the residue off. I don't see the white spots that I did with the isopropyl. The one odd thing about this, it has a slightly smoother texture. It, it's slightly greasy, if anything. It hasn't uh, evaporated completely when I hit it with uh, compressed air. I don't know what it'll be like after time. 
but uh, it seems to have done a fine job of taking everything off. I don't see any damage to the board. This other one, again, looks pretty good. However, there is a slight red tinge to this. There's a dye in this. It's supposed to smell not so nasty. I'm not sure whether that will leave anything on the board. We'll all have another look later. But that's the second batch. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We'll leave the piece of plastic in there and we'll throw a button and we'll see what happens. Number three is going to be the acetone-based nail polish remover. Again, we'll have a little close-up to start. Here's the uh, store brand nail polish remover. It is acetone-based. Again, it's dyed. It has a slight purple color to it. And when you pour it out, you can see that slight purple color in the jar. Doesn't show up so well under the camera. But let's uh, have a little cleanup here and see how this works. Hit that with some compressed air. Seems to dry off pretty quickly. Give that another little scrub. It doesn't seem to have got it all off on the first batch. Let's have a close look at this. There's still places where there's a little bit of residue left. Well, let's go back. We'll leave this, do the other board, a little scrub. Look at that on the close-up. This looks pretty good. Maybe it was just the old flux on that board from China. But uh, now we're going to do a test that I think is probably going to fail badly. But we'll see. Come back in half an hour. We're going to drop another little button in there and see what happens. I suspect this is going to eat the plastic a little bit, uh, both the connector and the little plastic button. Lastly, different container, but uh, we're going to go with the actual commercial flux remover, MG Chemicals. Doesn't actually say on the can what's uh, in it, but if you go to their website, all of the uh, documentation is on their website so you can see exactly what's in it. We're just going to give the boards a little spray. This in some ways easier to use, some ways harder to use. Little, And we'll do the same thing hitting it with a brush. Do the other one. dry those off and look under the close-up. And this has done a pretty good job. There's a tiny bit left, but it uh, looks pretty good. What you're seeing on some of these close-ups is I haven't dried it completely. And lastly, we'll spray the little button I have here and leave it in the pan. 
and we'll come back in half an hour and see how all of these have done. Okay, let's see how we did. We're back after half an hour. The first board seems fine. Scratch test on the plastic doesn't seem to do anything. And on the plastic button, there's no effect at all. We'll get some close-up shots of this so everybody can have a, a better look, but the button is completely unharmed even when I hit it with my fingernail. And the plastics are completely unharmed. Second one, this is the non-acetone nail polish remover. Uh, plastics, the socket, seems fine when I scratch it with my fingernail and the button is soft I can make indentations into this plastic and scratch it quite noticeably with my fingernail we'll get a couple of close-up pictures of this certainly I wouldn't recommend this one on plastics. This seems like a fail. Number three, this is acetone. The board itself looks pretty good. Any remaining flux that was there just comes off with my fingers. Get a close up. Looks pretty good. The plastic on the side of the power connector doesn't appear to be affected. Let me scratch it with my fingernail. And the button, the button is noticeably soft, the plastic. It's definitely eaten into this plastic. I'll get a close-up picture of this. You can definitely see scratches from my fingernail. Lastly, we have the commercial flux remover. I don't expect this has done anything bad. The board itself looks very good. The plastics on it are just fine. More telling, this softer plastic on the push button is still hard, not affected at all. And this is what we would expect with a, a good commercial flux remover. So in conclusion, what would I use? What wouldn't I use? Well, isopropyl alcohol is cheap. It works well. The two nail polish removers, oddly, the acetone one was less harmful. And the commercial flux remover is perfect. So the winner here is buy the real thing, flux remover. In a pinch, if you don't have it, I would recommend using isopropyl alcohol. Might be a little bit more work, but uh, it'll do the job. Might, I guess they might have to work out a little bit more. And the tool of choice here, an old soft toothbrush. If there's a recommendation here, it's toothbrushes are your friend. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and there'll be more in the future.